Josh says, when you go on a deployment, how does the logistics of equipment work? Say you live in Texas and have to go to South Florida. I imagine it's hard to take a ladder with you on a flight. If I live in Texas, I need to go to South Florida. I'm driving. I'm just going to drive. If I live in Texas and they send, want to send me to Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, I'm still going to drive. If they want to send me to LA, I'm driving. And the reason why is because I might be there for a while and, you know, flights, eh, probably cheaper than driving, depending on how far it is. Um, but a rental car is not, right? Because you got to pay for the car not, and you got to pay for fuel. Um, obviously, it's not your car. Um, so you, you can't go banging around, you know, on, back on dirt roads or whatever. Um, because if you ding it up, then you're going to, it's going to be, it's going to cost you more. That's a, you know, kind of a, a whole other conversation, I guess. Um, the, uh, the logistics of equipment are basically that you just take it with you in your vehicle. That's the easiest thing. It's the simplest thing. You have the most freedom that way. Uh, you know, if you buy, if you buy a round trip ticket, you have no idea how long you're going to be there. Um, so you just take it with you. Now, that said, if they say, Hey, um, you're a flood adjuster and all you really are taking with you is your laser and your camera and your laptop, um, and a little bag of clothes and you live in, you know, Salt Lake City, and they want to send you to New Hampshire. Heck yeah, I'm flying. Rent a car, no problem. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna lug around um, ladders and printers and all that kind of stuff. And if I need a printer, um, then I'm gonna just go buy a eighty dollar one at Staples. Um, so, a couple ways to do it. I think the the most effective way, especially because they may say, you know, you get you get sent to South Florida, and you let's say you live in Texas. Um, your deployment in South Florida may wrap up and they might send you to um, North Carolina, right? I now got to get a flight to North Carolina or drive my rental car up there, right? You put miles on them, you're going to put a lot of miles on a rental vehicle. So there's really only a few instances, I think, where flying makes sense. Um, obviously, if you go overseas, if they want to send you to Australia, which we've had adjusters that got sent to Australia a couple of years ago, you're not, you're not driving there or taking your car with you, right? You're just going to fly. And I wouldn't take anything at all with me. I would just fly there and, and buy all my supplies on site. Um, and and that's be, that would be if I have to fly any place, that's what I would do. This video is sponsored by Hague Education. Use code ADJUSTERTV at checkout to get a huge discount on the best adjuster certifications, damage field guides, and adjuster tools at HagueEducation.com. Erica asked a couple times in here, is your fast track deployment good for desk adjuster position? Yes, absolutely. I think I answered that with Deacon's question. What's the average time to get paid after your, your submitted claim clears audit? Clay asks, and by audit, he means file review. File review is the process by which you finish your claim, all your reports, you put your invoice together, you label your photos and do all that stuff, and then you hit complete and Xactimate sends it up to the cloud, right? To exact analysis, basically. It shows back up in exact analysis as ready to be reviewed. And part of the quality control process um, for the IA firm is that IA firm, file, a file reviewer from I, your IA firm is going to look through everything, make sure, you know, you got your risk photo in there, make sure that, you know, you, you, you wrote in your estimate that there was damage to bathroom make sure that there's photos of that bathroom in there right and that it's that there's you're, you're documenting what you've written in the estimate and you're backing it up with your photos that your all your reports are in there that your invoices filled out correctly that your estimate total matches the claim summary total all this kind of stuff right um, once that's done once they look through everything it looks good to go they may have to kick it back to you you know wrong price list whatever and you fix that and you send it back and they look through it the whole thing again, right? They, they can't just like look for the one thing that you, they have to re-review your file. So make sure that you don't change something else when they send something back to you to change two things. Don't change, th fix three things, you know, it's something that you noticed um, without at least letting them know because they have to re-review that whole file. Um, then they will send it to the carrier who will then 
do audits on your files where where they will randomly their quality assurance people will randomly pull files from every adjuster just do a, look at them they may do a quick skim of them they may go reinspect them um, and then once that's done then they put it through to payroll um, or to the, the payment they'll send they'll send it over to uh, um, to pay the people at the carrier who pay the IA firm, and then they'll they'll pay the IA firm, and the IA firm will pay you. With the big firms, um, most of the time, when you when your file gets pilots in particular was always really good about this. When your file, my file, made it through file review and it got sent to the carrier, pilot paid me. They put it on my next pay, my the next payroll for my next paycheck, right? No matter what else happened with the file after that, it may get kicked back by QA, but at least Pilot paid me, and then Pilot will wait to get paid by the carrier. Um, so, the faster you can, the 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 more clear your file is, and the faster you can like turn files over and get them into file review, and the easier you make it for file review to like look through your your your. Uh, assignments for your file and it makes sense don't have a lot of typos and errors and spelling and whatever else um, all the photos are in there they they're in an order that makes sense the order that order follows the scoping order follows the estimate order so on and so forth um, the easier it is for people to, to look at your file which is you just you proving why you're going to pay for this um, the faster it's going to get through file review and the faster you'll get paid especially by the big companies and Crawfords and the pilots um, so that can be, you know, as little as the next paycheck, right? And m most of the time, I think most of the companies pay every two weeks. Um, but I know that in the past, and I don't know what Pilot does these days, but in the past, um, when I worked for them on major catastrophes, they would often switch over to weekly, wherever people got paid weekly. Um, so you can get paid pretty quick as, as long as you can turn your files around and they're good solid files. And even if they're not, if, even if you're new and you're still getting your feet under you with this, um, file review will tell you what to, what to fix, fix those things, send it back and they'll send it through and then you get paid. Um, so don't, don't, don't try to be, go for perfection on your files. Um, get them as close as you reasonably can. Um, you want to give the insured everything that they're owed. Um, but there's, you know, you get to the point of diminishing returns where we're talking about pennies on things, and that's when we when we want to stop and we want to get that file in so that they at least get some money in their hand faster. Um, because most claims, I think it's not unreasonable to say that most claims will reopen for something. Probably in in many cases, long after you've left the cat site, so it's not it is no reflection on you or your experience. Contractor finds something else. Um, whatever, right? Price uh, changes by the time the, the homeowner decides they want to do the work or the, to find out the siding's not available anymore, the file's going to reopen. As a desk adjuster, Martha says, as a desk adjuster, she's talking about when she's working, uh, will I need to purchase Xactimate or is this on the I firms? As far as I know, um, you will all, as an independent, you will always have to pay for Xactimate yourself uh, but the good news is, is that um, when you are deployed, especially with one of the bigger firms, most of the firms have some kind of a discount that they can extend to you for Xactimate that they've they've negotiated with Xactware. So Pilots is somebody can correct me in the chat if I'm wrong on this. Pilots is something like um, eighty five dollars or ninety dollars or something like that. Whereas if you just pay for it yourself, it's like $235 or $285 a month, right? So it's a significant savings. So I would counsel you, unless you're like doing restoration construction or whatever, probably uh, just try to stick with the demo while you're learning as much as possible. And then once you get deployed, then that's when you, those discounts will trigger and you can, um, not pay a gazillion dollars for it. Cat's iPhone asks, what state do you think you've made the most in working cat claims? Well, I think this is different for everybody, um, but I would say most likely the state that I've made the most is Wisconsin. 
believe it or not, and that's going to be hail. And believe that or not. Other adjusters, um, it may be that they're in Texas and they make all their money in Texas or they make all their money in South Carolina. Um, it just really depends on the relationships that you build up. Um, I did, the vast majority of the claims I did were for American Family and their HQ is in Madison, Wisconsin. And they have uh, pretty much the whole like Northern, Northern Plains, Minnesota, Dakotas, um, all the way down into Missouri. Um, they have very, very, very high policies enforced there. Their, their sales apparatus is pretty aggressive. Um, so they have lots and lots and lots of PIF policies in force. Um, so I worked a lot in those areas. But if you worked for a different company that was, you know, their main focus was in the Carolinas or in the Southeast or whatever, then that's where you're going to work. So get all the licenses you can. Wisconsin obviously doesn't have a license. Minnesota does and worked a lot, lots and lots and lots in Minnesota. If you're a brand new adjuster working for a major IA firm, you will most likely already be covered under a blanket errors and emissions policy. You probably already pay something like five or $10 per claim for this coverage. And what is errors and emissions? Well, if you're accused of messing something up on a claim, your E and O insurance will step in and help you out. But what if you cause damage or injury on a field inspection? For example, your ladder falls down and smashes the insured's brand new Ford F-150 Lightning then a general liability policy will cover you in that instance. Again, you likely have a little bit of protection through your IA firm as a newbie adjuster. However, if you've got a year or two under your belt and you make most or all of your annual income from claims work, then you owe it to yourself to upgrade your E&O and general liability coverages to be customized to you. And depending on how many claims you run in a year, there's a very good chance these policies will be cheaper for you with your own coverages. Better and cheaper? Sign me up. There's only one company that provides E&O and general liability solely to the insurance industry, and that is CPLIC, aka Kaplik. They even have drone and cyber coverages. Download the free guide all about the different kinds of insurance you as the adjuster should carry at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. And with more than 700 videos, there's plenty more to watch here on Adjuster TV. Don't know where to start? Just go to my videos page here on YouTube and type in a search term right here to find an answer to almost any question you have about property claims handling. And we'll see you in the next one.